Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be discussing some of the more recent discoveries in regards to this really fascinating phenomenon referred to as the Stellar Streams. A collection of very beautiful formations across the galaxy and that we've actually seen in many other galaxies that represent some of the ancient leftovers from possibly galaxies, possibly star clusters and possibly something else. And so in this case, this is basically the result of the Milky Way being a kind of an ancient cosmic monster. The one that slowly devours galaxies around it, leaving behind these stretched leftovers. And though once again we've seen this around other galaxies, it's really the streams around the Milky Way that are particularly exciting, because they tell us a lot about the history of our own galaxy and essentially help us solve a lot of ancient mysteries. And so for billions of years, our galaxy has been constantly colliding and consuming smaller satellite galaxies, with each of these violent mergers producing something inside the Milky Way, including actually our Sun, we believe our Sun was formed during one of these collisions, but then instead of being completely erased from history, leaving behind these elongated structures, stellar streams, something that kind of resembles this. And these are basically kind of like rivers of stars, remnants of various galaxies torn apart by tremendous gravitational tidal forces. And so I guess we're discussing the leftovers from this galactic cannibalism. And specifically we're going to discuss the most recent discoveries including the observations from the Vera Rubin Observatory that was able to produce some of the most spectacular images of these streams, providing certain answers about ancient history. But in general these streams are essential to explain the concept referred to as the hierarchical universe. The idea that these large structures, like our own galaxy, very likely grow by incorporating smaller structures. And so when a small galaxy, some kind of a dwarf galaxy for example, or a dense collection of stars gets a little bit close to a larger object, the massive amount of gravity of the larger galaxy stretches the smaller object into these very thin strips, eventually forming a very long, very thin group of stars moving collectively along a shared trajectory. And so basically they become a kind of a ring around the galaxy or a stellar stream. And in this case they provide us both motion or kinematic clues and also chemical clues, telling us a little bit more about the initial object. But this doesn't just tell us about the history of the Milky Way, they also help us test a lot of various theories, including theories of the dark matter. The invisible substance that constitutes 85% of all matter and whose existence is only obvious because of the gravitational effects. And there's a really important reason why stellar streams teach us so much about this dark matter. The way stellar streams are shaped, or more importantly, the way they are disturbed, is entirely governed by gravity from both the visible matter and of course the dark matter halo. And so if we find any irregularities or disturbances inside one of these streams, for example from some kind of a supermassive invisible object, we can deduce that something else, like a clump of dark matter, must have broken the stream. But finding these faint streams is kind of difficult, mostly because they are very often hidden in these swarms of hundreds of billions of other stars and are also barely visible. But in recent years, one mission was extremely good at detecting them, the ESA's Gaia spacecraft. He was able to measure the motion of individual stars, and so he was able to produce very accurate parallax and distance measurements for over 2 billion stars around us. And this extremely high quality data allowed scientists to identify a lot of new stellar streams. Now as always all of the studies about this should be in the description below, and actually there is quite a few studies that discuss these stellar streams. But in essence, in just the last couple of years, Gaia telescope mapped at least six major ancient galactic mergers by observing these stellar streams that almost certainly eventually influenced the Milky Way and reshaped the galaxy in a way we still don't really understand. But five of these mergers were previously known and so Gaia basically helped us understand the exact details about them. But the sixth merger, now referred to as the Pontus merger, involving the Pontus stream, is one of these recent previously unknown discoveries. This points to a possible satellite galaxy that we are likely combined 8 to 10 billion years ago, with the stars associated with Pontus moving very slowly, suggesting that the merger took place extremely early in the galactic history. But in general there were just so many more discoveries coming from Gaia. As a matter of fact, another recent study using the automated star stream system detected 87 stellar streams associated with various global clusters that have all been recently reported in the study below. And this single detection here significantly improved our knowledge of the known stellar streams, implying that nearly a hundred collisions must have happened inside the Milky Way galaxy to produce each of these streams. 
And that's because a lot of these clusters probably started as smaller dwarf galaxies a long time ago. But these new observations also challenge previous assumptions and previous expectations about what we expected from these streams. And that's because previously researchers thought that all of these streams are going to be very thin and extremely long. But new samples show us that many of them are not. Some of them seem to be short, some of them seem to be very wide, and some of them are even misaligned with the orbit of the progenitor cluster, like the stream that's now referred to as NGC 4147. And so in this case, this stream appears as a kind of a circular blob, which essentially demonstrates a lot of complexity when it comes to these galactic interactions, and of course suggests that we still have so much to learn. But when it comes to some of these streams, a few of them are super exciting for the studies of dark matter, because they do show signs of interactions with something invisible. For example, the stream referred to as GD1. This was also recently explored in several studies, but in general this stream is extremely long and very thin, but it does have peculiar irregularities. Unusual gaps, or basically localized under density of stars, and very strange spurs that seem to suggest some kind of an over density. And previously, in some of the studies, astronomers discovered that trying to explain these bizarre anomalies by using regular stars or regular clusters, or basically influences from known objects, could not easily explain these distinctive gaps and spurs. It seemed to require something else, something unknown, perturbing the object, because it had to be exceptionally dense. And so in this recent study from 2025, physicists proposed a solution, a core collapsing self-interacting dark matter halo, or once again, a chunk of dark matter, which would be extremely dense, much higher than actually expected, and much higher than initially predicted. And so here this would require a specific type of dark matter, referred to as self-interacting dark matter. Particles that somehow interact with each other, which allows this dark matter subhalo to collapse under their own gravity and become very dense, even enough to create required gravitational influence. And so here, by using several numerical simulations and observations from this particular stream, scientists demonstrated that this type of a subhalo would be enough to create these bizarre anomalies, disrupting the stream in just the same way as predicted by the models. And something very similar was actually discussed a couple of years back by the scientists from Harvard when looking at another stream and another very unusual anomalous feature. The video about this should be in the description below, but here there was another observation of something very massive disrupting the stream. And so, if confirmed, this would actually be an intriguing discovery because this would mark a very exciting new way to study dark matter by helping us investigate its fundamental properties through observations of these distant interactions. Although right now these are just a couple of studies, and so we obviously need more confirmations. But apart from observations from Gaia, we now have a new exciting telescope referred to as the Vera Rubin Observatory. And here this observatory discovered something way beyond our galaxy. And you can see it in this image. Now this telescope is extremely powerful. And it's about to start its 10-year project referred to as LSST. Legacy Survey of Spacetime. This was anticipated to be a major advance in astronomy, and it's going to show us so much more we've never seen before. And so during its initial observations back in June of 2025, when it was commissioning its main camera, it produced some of these incredible first images. And this was already quite groundbreaking. This was the first stellar stream discovered using the Vera Rubin Observatory around a giant spiral galaxy referred to as Massey 61. This is actually a pretty well-known galaxy in the Virgo cluster, but in this case none of the previous images could see the stream, yet it was visible to the Vera Rubin Observatory. And so after several centuries of observing this galaxy, we actually finally discovered something completely new. This is a very long, narrow feature extending northwards from M61 and seems to be at least 160,000 light years in length. This actually dwarfs any streams we have right here in the Milky Way galaxy, which are often measured in just tens of thousands of light years and are very often at least three to five times shorter. And so in this case, some kind of a dwarf galaxy interaction possibly created this massive stream, but also very likely had a major impact on M61 itself. Right now, the suggestion is that it very likely resulted in the bar formation of this galaxy and possibly resulted in a major starburst activity, but also awakened the central black hole, making this galaxy active. And this actually echoes exactly what happened in the Milky Way with the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, whose repeated impacts eventually produced a lot of stars, including most likely our Sun. And so technically even our birth right here in the solar system is kind of connected to these ancient river-like structures. But in this case, this discovery is really just the tip of the iceberg, as Vera Rubin is probably going to be discovering so many more of these features all over the place. 
And that's of course going to be super exciting because this is a record of a lot of ancient interactions and a lot of ancient collisions, helping us understand how everything around us evolved. With a lot of these recent studies in the description, revealing previously unknown murders, like the one I mentioned before known as Pontus, doubling the known number of streams associated with global clusters, and even revealing a surprising density in how these streams are shaped and how they look, but even providing us with a unique new way to study the dark matter halo, but even giving us a few hints on what dark matter might be. And so as telescopes like Vera Rubin become fully operational, and as we actually reanalyze some of the older data, including the Gaia data, chances are we're going to be discovering so many more of these objects in years to come, with even objects that we thought were known to us, revealing new secrets and new structures. And so we'll definitely come back and discuss these structures in some of the future videos. And until then, check out some of the previous videos on a similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.